name's Susan. I'm one of the childbirth educators here at Holy Redeemer Hospital. Welcome to the Childbirth Education Series. Today we're going to be addressing pregnancy and how it applies to labor as well too. So let's start off talking about some of the parts of the woman's body that are used or made specific to pregnancy. The uh, uterus is the biggest part of your body, probably right now, and it contains the baby, the amniotic fluid, and a bunch of other stuff that we're gonna be talking about today. So the uterus is actually a muscle, a muscle just like your bicep, and it will contract to push the baby down and out the birth canal when you go into labor. The uterus is about the size of your fist when you're not pregnant, and grows to the size of a basketball when you're about to deliver your baby. So it will get large and it will expand as your baby grows. The next part I wanted to talk about is the cervix. The cervix is right here at the bottom of the uterus. The cervix has a very important job. It's basically the door that allows the baby to exit the body. Additionally, the cervix is supposed to be closed while you're pregnant. The cervix will only start to open at the time of your labor. The cervix usually is um, about the size of a mini donut and its consistency and its shape. So just like the mini donut, your cervix is round on the outside and has a center. It's the center part that's going to be doing the opening. Think of it like this. When you put a piece of bubble gum in your mouth and you start to chew, in order to blow the bubble, you have to um, do something with your tongue, thin it out, if you will, before you can make that bubble with your bubble gum. The cervix has a lot of work to do at the time of labor. Again, it's supposed to be nice and thick and long and closed while you're pregnant, but at the time of labor, it's going to start to thin out first and then open up as the contractions of the uterus push the baby down the birth canal. The next area we're going to talk about is the placenta. Women don't have placentas unless they're pregnant. So that is something that's actually made specific for your baby. And I have a little show and tell here. And so the placenta actually looks just like this, nice and beefy, nice and red. It starts out at the beginning of your pregnancy, way down here, close to the cervix. As the baby grows and the uterus grows, this, this placenta will move all the way up to the top of your uterus. It's aligned perfectly to allow the baby to exit through the cervix at the time of your labor. And it's also not in the way to cause any difficulties or any trauma to you. So again, nice and red and beefy. It has several functions. One of the most important functions that it does is it allows the blood to filter from your body with nutrients and oxygen to go to the baby. And that's basically how the baby gets its nutrients while you're pregnant. It's really important um, that you understand that anything that you put into your body goes through the placenta and can affect the baby. So for this reason, it's not recommended to drink alcohol or to smoke cigarettes. If you must continue to smoke cigarettes, it's best to wean down for as little cigarette smoking that you can do as possible during your pregnancy. So the placenta acts like a filter to filter between you and your baby, as well as providing blood and oxygen and other nutrients to the baby. So there's something that works between the placenta, which is attached to your uterus, and the baby, and that's the umbilical cord. And so I'm gonna take the baby out of here and I'll explain what this is in just a second. But between the placenta and the baby is something called the umbilical cord. And the umbilical cord is pretty much attached towards the center of the placenta, and it goes to the baby's belly button. It contains two arteries and one vein. And that's how the oxygen and nutrients get from the placenta to the baby and then back again um, for any type of exchange. The cord itself is very thick and firm. One of the things, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on in, the, in another series, is that um, many times the doctor will say, you know, at the time of birth, 
whoever is the support person or even the mom can choose to cut the cord, allowing the cord to be removed from the baby's body and the baby then starts to breathe and function on its own. So the cord is typically clamped in two places and then scissors are used to cut in between. And that is something that um, either the mom or her support person can do at the time of delivery. And uh, it's something that you would let your nurse know as well if this is really important for you. So, the baby is contained in the uterus with the placenta and the umbilical cord, and they all are in something called the amniotic sac. And this is a very, um, very, very thick, um, almost like saran wrap type of a feel to it. It contains fluid and the baby and the umbilical cord inside of it. And the purpose of the fluid that's inside, or the bag of waters, is to allow a constant temperature around the baby during your pregnancy. Additionally, um, much like when you're in a swimming pool, it gives the baby buoyancy. So the baby can um, float or move a little bit easier inside of you. It's really important that the baby moves during your pregnancy and moves towards the end of your pregnancy as well. It's the way that um, the baby develops the muscles, um, as well as it tells you as the mom that the baby's doing okay. So if the baby's moving around properly, you'll feel it. Um, many times you can actually see your abdomen move, almost in a wave-like movement as the baby kicks or gives you an elbow. Many times moms talk about feeling this movement uh, when they're laying down close to time for bed. Um, an inconvenient time, but nevertheless, that's when it seems like the baby wakes up and does most of the moving. So we have the uterus, which contains the placenta, which is stuck to the top of the uterus. The baby is inside the amniotic sac with the umbilical cord. And all of these things form protective mechanisms to make sure that the baby and the umbilical cord are all safe inside of you. We'll talk a little bit more in, in another series about how the bag of water breaks and what that means um, for you and for your physician. So for right now, we do need to talk a little bit more about that um, cervix, because in the center of the cervix, and again, we, we talked about having a mini donut, having the center. What we also have is another protective mechanism for the pregnancy and for the baby to prevent infection is a little plug that we call the mucus plug. The mucus plug actually just serves as a, another area of protection. It is expelled closer to the time of the end of the pregnancy. And again, its sole purpose is to just put a little bit of blockage to the cervix, making sure that the entranceway is completely blocked until the time of the birth. The last part I wanted to talk about was the birth canal which is actually the part of the bot woman's body that starts on the outside that you can see, and it goes all the way up to the cervix. The woman's vagina must um, be stretched during the time of birth and labor, as well as um, there has to be some type of uh, secretions that the vagina uh, makes so that it provides a little bit of lubrication so that the baby can move and twist and turn, negotiate basically the curves and twists of your body. Lastly, I just wanted to talk about the pelvis. So I have a nice soft pelvis here. And keep in mind, as your baby grows and your center of gravity goes from inside your body to the outside of your body, um, many women will talk about how they feel like they have a pregnancy waddle. And that's just because your center of gravity has changed from internal to external and you compensate by doing the pregnancy waddle. At the same time, your pelvis um, and your body actually responds to a hormone that you make to allow the bones of your pelvis to have just a little bit of give so that as the baby's negotiating the twists and turns of the birth canal, they can exit as easily as possible. There's a clear definition between what a woman's body looks like when they're pregnant 
and when they're not pregnant. And as, as you can see, the center of the woman's body is the baby. Everything else, all of the organs, the bladder, everything either has to move up or it has to move down or it has to move out as the case might be. Um, some common changes that women experience when they're pregnant is as the baby grows, they may not have as much lung capacity to take a nice deep breath. Um, you may feel that you are uh, much more tired towards the end of your pregnancy, have difficulty sleeping because maybe your back hurts. You may notice some swelling either in your feet or your hands, which is considered normal. Um, and then also uh, many women will notice a change in their breast from the size that they are prior to pregnancy. Usually there's an increase to one additional cup size. Loose joints come from the hormone that your body makes, not just for your pelvis, but for all of your joints. You might find as your baby grows that your bladder, which is um, able to contain a lot of urine, can no longer hold a lot of urine. Many women have to get up in the middle of the night to go ahead and go to the bathroom. Um, sometimes people experience nasal congestion as well as part of the hormones. You might even notice a nosebleed as well too, which is considered normal. Um, you may have some heartburn again as the baby grows. You know, there's less room for your stomach and so there's less ability to have as much food as you might normally eat, so you might eat smaller frequent meals. Your skin could change. Some women have a um, line in the center of their stomach and that goes away. It's just for pregnancy only. Um, lastly, a lot of women complain of, of hemorrhoids or constipation. As the baby grows again, your intestines are moved to the side, down and over. It decreases the ability to have motility and therefore to have uh, regular bowel movements as well too. I hope this discussion has been helpful to you. Please uh, look forward to our next series as we continue to talk about labor, pain relief, and pain management. Thank you so much for choosing Holy Redeemer Hospital.